Joining me now is Dr. Arthur DeCross. He is a featured speaker at the AGA session on physician burnout. Dr. DeCross, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Uh, the AGA conducted a very large survey on burnout among gastroenterologists. Um, what is burnout? Define it for us. Well, you, you know, it, it begins with a question of what burnout isn't. I certainly approach the question as, though, well, burnout is what happens when you're old and you're tired and you're tired of doing your work. It's no longer exciting. Maybe you're phoning it in. But burnout is actually a, a very serious issue of being emotionally and mentally exhausted from your work, losing the meaning and the joy in your work. Uh, and the consequences of this can be that you begin to treat your patients and coworkers as obstacles. Um, and uh, this is often triggered by a low sense of personal accomplishment. So events such as delayed uh, track to promotion, reduced salaries, reduced administrative time, increased burdens uh, of regulation, increased stresses to be productive in, uh, in endoscopy, for example, can all contribute to uh, burnout. So much to be considered. Um, what was the overall rate of burnout? Well, we had a 12% response rate to the survey, which is very good for an external survey. So we have to interpret that a little bit cautiously, mm -hmm. but the overall rate of burnout was 54% among gastroenterologists. So any particular group um, at greater risk, gastroenterologists, I guess? Well, in keeping with national trends, we found that there was a statistically significant increase in the risk or vulnerability of our women gastroenterologists for burnout. And so that was a a small but real difference of 62% versus 50%. We also were surprised, however, uh, although it did validate other studies, that there's a very high burnout rate among trainees and young gastroenterologists. And that's not intuitive because one would assume that burnout is something that accumulates over time as frustration and stress tends to wear you down. Could you figure out why women and why the younger gastroenterologists? Well, I think those are two very different issues. I think uh, when it comes to women gastroenterologists, um, we focus a little bit more on what triggers a, uh, a low sense of personal accomplishment. I think our uh, colleagues are often uh, under different time and uh, family uh, constraints. Uh, they may take time off to uh, have children. They may be out of the endoscopy suite from certain procedures because they're pregnant. Um, they, they may have less time to achieve publications, they may be on a slower track to promotion. And I think unfortunately uh, there's a very real, recognized, but really not remedied wage gap that uh, women gastroenterologists may be paid 15% less on average than their male counterparts. I think there are issues of respect that sneak in here. Um, women gastroenterologists are more likely to, to be addressed by their first name by both nurses and patients. Um, and so I think there are a lot of little things that make them uh, somewhat more vulnerable uh, to the triggers of burnout. Um, I think it, it does deserve much more careful study to try to understand why our young trainees are so vulnerable to burnout. This speaks to so many people. I mean, it would seem that somebody can relate, everybody can relate to this in some form or fashion. Yes, well, while there was a statistically significant increase in burnout for women, there was, it's still only a 10% difference, basically. Um, over 50% of the men were also reporting burnout, so I, I think that when we look at what contributes to burnout, uh, we see that there are many shared denominators uh, across all physicians. So, Doctor, what will this survey mean for gastroenterologists uh, down the road? Well, I think we have a lot of work to do in analyzing the survey results, but the most important things that we hope to take away are to clearly identify what are the major contributors to burnout among gastroenterologists and how does it impact our lives? Because if we understand these factors, then we can begin to construct programs that help mitigate burnout uh, among, for ourselves, for our colleagues, but even reduce those risk factors in the healthcare systems that we work in. It'll make a big difference in everybody's lives. Hope so. All right, Dr. DeCross, thank you. Thank you.